As primates, we like to think pretty highly of ourselves. We strut around with our opposable thumbs and fancy monkey brains like we own the place. And most of the time we do. But wait, you may say. What about that big not-human filled place? What rules that? Cetaceans, and in this video's case, dolphins. Those damn fish that aren't fish but are just mammals disguised as fish and are ridiculously smart to boot. So yeah, this video is just about dolphins and stuff involving dolphins. Let's go! It'd be an understatement to say that dolphins are smart. They are undisputedly some of the smartest creatures on Earth, right up there with your friendly neighborhood primates. Their brain size is actually super big compared to their bodies, only second to humans. And dolphins are also some of the only creatures that can pass the mirror test. If you showed a dirty, lesser animal their reflection in a mirror, they'd flip their shit, thinking another animal had encroached on their territory. But the chad, intellectual dolphin has been shown to recognize that its reflection is just that, a reflection of themselves. Good job, dolphins. Some dolphins have also been known to understand the concept of trade and worth. Scientists taught a dolphin named Kelly that if she brought them a piece of garbage, she would be rewarded with a fish. Kelly quickly learned that if she found, like, a piece of paper, she could either bring the researchers the single piece of paper and only get one fish, or she could trap the piece of paper under a rock and tear off tiny pieces bit by bit, effectively creating a seemingly endless supply of fish and leading to rampant fish inflation. Kelly the Dolphin, out misering even the most miserly of misers. With dolphins being as smart as they are, it probably comes as no surprise that the US military has done extensive research on how they can turn Flipper the Dolphin into Flipper the Commie Killer. It's been confirmed that the Navy has at least five divisions devoted to training dolphins dubbed the Marine Mammal Fleet, who train dolphins to do a variety of tasks from mine location to finding and reporting enemy divers. And while communists hating killer dolphins would be cool, the US Navy has made claims that training dolphins to fight and kill humans is impossible. But then again, when was the last time the government told the truth? Now training dolphins to pick up trash is all well and good, but the real crazy experiments come not from the US military, but the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or, for people who have sex, NASA. For whatever reason, instead of trying to, you know, go to space, NASA thought it'd be a great idea to find out what happens when you give dolphins doses of LSD. Yes, you heard me correctly, the amount of dolphins that have tripped balls on acid is above one. In the 1960s, NASA funded a variety of experiments involving the communications between dolphins and humans. And while this first comes across as a complete and utter waste of taxpayer dollars, the reality of it actually kind of makes some sense. If we ever did come across an intelligent alien species of some sort, the likelihood of them being biologically capable of speaking a basic human language is like less than impossible. So NASA figured if they could find out a way to communicate with dolphins, it would save them from the lifetime embarrassment that would ensue if we did make contact with aliens, but their relationship fell apart due to a language barrier. Dr. John Lilly was the man when it came to researching trans-species communications, and he headed a number of experiments involving dolphins in the English language. Unfortunately, Lilly quickly found out that dolphins don't have the necessary equipment to properly mimic human speech patterns, even if they wanted to. But Dr. Lilly did discover that dolphins became 70% more vocal when given doses of LSD. How he came to this conclusion, I have no idea. But it was the 60s, so giving shit psychedelics was basically a requirement. Hey Gary, these dolphins aren't saying much, uh, what do you say we do? Uh, I, I don't know, what if, what if we- now one of Dr. Lilly's more infamous experiments centered around a young male dolphin named Peter and the naturalist volunteer Margaret Howe Lovett. Basically, Lilly had Peter and Margaret spend large amounts of time isolated together and during these periods of isolation, Margaret was somehow supposed to teach the dolphin English. Funnily enough, these lessons actually netted some results, and various videos from BBC's documentary The Girl Who Talked to Dolphins shows Peter making some noises that sound suspiciously like a fishy version of English. I would show you guys some of the footage, but then BBC could have their way with me, so I'll put a link in the description to some of the videos. Pretty crazy stuff. One unintended side effect of these prolonged periods of isolation, however, was the attachment that Peter developed with Margaret. Apparently, Peter actually developed a bit of a crush on his teacher, and would make constant sexual advances toward her in the middle of lessons, sometimes even butting his head into her leg and knocking her over. It would be so bad that Margaret is quoted in saying, It would become part of what was like an itch. Just to get rid of it, we'd scratch it, and we'd be done, and move on. NASA funded an experiment in which a volunteer would have to whack off a dolphin to get him to focus on its English lessons. <laughs> It's stuff like this that makes me wonder if the people over at the Onion actually just know something the rest of us refuse to believe. Unfortunately, after nine months the experiment was ended, and Margaret was sent back home, leaving Peter all alone. Peter was so heartbroken at the sudden disappearance of the woman he had grown so attached to, that he effectively committed suicide by swimming down to the bottom of his pool and refusing to come up for air. Jesus! Okay, so I realized that that final story took a really dark turn, so I figured I'd finish off this video with one slightly less gloomy story. 
So, uh, yeah, let's talk about dolphins sucking on pufferfish. While your average everyday dolphin normally wouldn't come into contact with LSD, they've naturally found their own way to elicit some sort of high. Experts have observed dolphins passing a pufferfish around like a beach ball and taking turns chewing on it. The pufferfish releases a highly potent neurotoxin when threatened, but the dolphins have figured out that by slightly chewing on them, they can get a minimal dose of the toxin, which doesn't come close to killing them, but apparently puts them into a trance-like state. Mildly educational does not support the ingestion of pufferfish toxin in the attempt to replicate a dolphin high. Okay, so I think that pretty much does it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had quite a bit of fun making it. If you guys have any suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments section below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my friend Kendall. He did this cool animation for this video and I'm super grateful. He makes some pretty cool art, so I'll leave his Instagram in the description below for you guys to check him out. And as always, thanks for watching.